You are Locked On Kentucky, your daily podcast on the Kentucky Wildcats, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, what's going on, Big Blue Nation? Welcome on in to Locked On Kentucky, your daily Kentucky Wildcats podcast. I'm your host, Lance Dahl, writer for Sports Illustrated for various SEC-related things. But on this podcast specifically, we take a dive into all things Kentucky athletics. On today's episode of Locked On Kentucky, we're going to be going over the top five games of the 2022 uh, season for the Kentucky Wildcats, technically 2021-22 season for the Kentucky Wildcats basketball team. going to talk about the uh, top five games, uh, some of the ones that I really enjoyed uh, from this past season. Also going to talk about some transfer portal news. Some interesting transfers are out in the market. Kentucky pursuing uh, a lot of different players, but three in particular that interest me. Uh, it's going to be really fun to talk about those guys. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. That's Bet Online, where the game starts. Top five games of the 2021 22 season. We're going to work our way from number five all the way up to number one. And let's go ahead and get it started here, by the way. I apologize if I'm going to be if if I'm sniffling throughout this entire episode. Your boys got some al- allergy issues, uh, as everybody does during this time of the season. Number five, the game against number eighteen Arkansas, the seventy-five to seventy-three loss. Yes, this is the only loss I have on this list. Uh, f- fight me. It was a loss. I don't care. I like the game, uh, and, I, and I'll explain why. This was one of those games where. Kentucky was able to to claw back in after digging themselves a massive hole. It was a really big deficit early, and I was really impressed with the team's resolve. I was really impressed with the way that they were able to fight and able to uh, to eventually tie and then take the lead uh, in the second half, and it was a back-and-forth affair after that. Uh, really impressed with what Eric Musselman and Arkansas did from an X's and O's standpoint uh, in that game. It was just a fun environment. It was a fun matchup. It was a great call by the CBS crew. I really enjoyed it. Oscar Shibway had 30 points and 18 rebounds. J.D. Note, the star for Arkansas, had 30 points. Those two went back and forth and back and forth. It's a shame the game ended the way that it did, uh, and it's a shame that uh, Ty Ty Washington and Severe Wheeler played as poorly as they did, but overall, I thought it was a very entertaining game. I enjoyed it. Uh, and I know that it, I know that you know it's like it's hard to join uh, enjoy a loss, but I even said it during the time or after the game, excuse me, during our recap episode. I was like, I think this is the best I've ever felt after a loss. I was impressed with the way Kentucky played. There's some things to tweak, but overall, I thought it was a great matchup. Thought it was a great matchup. Number four on this list. North Carolina, the North Carolina game during the non-conference slate, uh, 69 to a 98 win uh, for the Wildcats. Almost broke 100. I don't remember what happened at the very end of that game, but Kentucky had a couple different opportunities to get to 100 points, uh, and they botched it. I remember being sad, uh, but it was a huge win for the team. Uh, obviously, the severe Wheeler game, uh, if, if anybody out there remembers, 26 points for Wheeler, 12 of 15 from the floor. This is one of those games where I don't think, according to Ken Palm, this is one of the faster paced games. This is one of the faster paced games Kentucky played this season, but it wasn't like insanely fast. But I just remember from this game, like Kentucky getting out and running a lot, like a, a lot, a lot. Uh, and, they, and then they, they, they just about dominated shooting from the floor. They shot over 50%, both from three and from two. I was really, really impressed with this victory and this, you know, looking back on it now is a really, really nice win because, uh, North Carolina is in the final four. Pretty sweet win uh, for the Wildcats. And, uh, I'll, I'll say this, (laughs) but to, to kind of take a break here, uh, in between the top five games. So, uh, one of you on, on Rupp Rafters. And whenever I say one of you, I don't think this person was like a consistent listener of the podcast, um, but one of you put out my episode that I did on Coach Calipari and how he wasn't going to wasn't going to leave, nor was he going to be fired, and then measuring expectations for Kentucky basketball moving forward. One of you put that episode on Rupp Rafters uh, and essentially said, you know, I've been a Cal, I've not been a fan of Cal for a while, but 
give this guy a, a, a listen, give him, give him uh, an opportunity to uh, say what he has to say, and then reconsider your stance. And um, I, it was obviously, I, I think I've mentioned this on the show, I've mentioned it on Twitter, Rupp Rafters right now, if you don't know, is a message board over on Rivals. Uh, it's over specifically on Cats Illustrated. Really big message board, a lot of interaction over there. Just people talking about Kentucky sports, specifically a lot about Kentucky basketball. But Rupp Rafters is, uh, since the St. Peter's loss, been in absolute just shambles. Absolute shambles. Uh, and uh, so people are very, very upset. Uh, some a lot more than others. And I, uh, I find it some of it entertaining and some of it legitimate. And a lot of people... I don't ne- didn't necessarily push back on what I had to say, but a lot of people were still were still are still under the impression that Coach Cal should be let go or that the program's heading in a really really bad direction. And I just want to say here because I think it's a fair time to do it. I'm not as big of a Coach Calipari fan as some people may think. What I was trying to say, and I need to go back and listen, uh, listen to what I had to say, um, but but my perspective and kind of the the direction I was trying to take the conversation was, I, I guess I didn't specify it, I don't think I did, was it's less that I want to continue to give Coach Cal chance after chance after chance after chance because he's done all these great things in the past. It's more of... It, that's part of it, but it's more of I don't want the university to do something that will long term damage the program, right? I don't want them to throw forty to fifty million dollars at a guy that's won a national title and been to, been to several Final Fours just to get him to walk. Because I'm under the impression that I don't know if there's somebody out there that could come in and immediately elevate the program past where he's got it right now. Uh, that that's my concern is is not necessarily a back about Cal. He can be replaced. Anybody can be replaced. Um, I, I just don't know if there's somebody out there that I would be comfortable with. I would much rather let him go or him walk after a season or a consistent stretch of seasons where he was underperforming. Obviously, say what you want about this year. We still had the national player of the year. Um, and, and I think Kentucky did a lot of good things. We talked just. Uh, I think it was in that measuring expectations episode about the what ifs for Kentucky. What if everybody was healthy? What if everybody was eligible? What was this team set up to do? Set up to do a lot, by the way. Um, but overall, like I, I think that now is not the time to let somebody go. I just don't think that it would be a wise idea. And I wanted to, to put that out there because I know that a lot of people are talking about it on Rough, Rough Rafters right now. Um, and I'm sure a couple of them will probably see this episode. So I just wanted, wanted to put that thought out there um, as, as we go through uh, today's episode. Top five games of the 2022 season. Uh, the game against Arkansas, then the victory against North Carolina, a blowout, and then on a conference slate uh, to kind of propel Kentucky into the SEC slate. One of those games where Kentucky got out and ran very, very well. Going to talk about the other three games, best games of the 2022 season, 2021-22 season. I'm an idiot. I keep keep saying things incorrectly. Before we get to that, though, I want to tell you guys about our friends at Athletic Greens. Athletic Greens is something that I actually personally use every single day. I started taking Athletic Greens because I wanted better gut health, and I don't really enjoy taking pills. I, I, I really don't enjoy doing that. Uh, but I, I wanted a supplement that was both good for me, obviously, and I wanted something that actually tasted good, something I, I could enjoy. So what exactly is Athletic Greens? Well, with one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics into your body. It helps you start your day right. Uh, this special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, like I mentioned earlier. It also helps support your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. It covers all the things. It covers all the things. It's great for my digestion. I, uh, I have a little bit of stomach trouble, so it, it, it really helps with that. And then it also gives me energy. and It is very easy to eat every single day. And it costs you less than $3 a day. So when you're investing in your, in your health, and on top of that, it's cheaper than, say, your cold brew habit. 
and it's cheaper than getting all the different supplements yourself as well. You're, you're investing in an all-in-one nutritional insurance. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash college. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash college to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Today's episode of Locked on Kentucky is also brought to you by Stat Hero. Stat Hero's NCAA single game pick'ems pits the star players against each other in an amazing hybrid between fantasy and sports gambling. It's really, really fun what they've got going on over at Stat Hero. Stat Hero gives you the advantage, resulting in their gamers winning four times more often because Stat Hero eliminates the mystery about who or what you are going up against. In addition to their pick'em games, they also have dozens of lineups you can comb through to take on head-to-head. They simply post sets of players for you to take on with a set of players that you choose. You could do this for the Final Four. You could pick some players from Duke, and you could pick some players from North Carolina to go up against each other. It's, It's very easy. It's very simple. Uh, the gameplay is sleek. It's very easy to kind of get through. It's not very complicated, not too hard to read into. It's the easiest and fastest way to get your sports action fixed. This right here, Stat Hero, is what daily fantasy was meant to be. And you can sign up for free right now at stathero.com slash locked on and use promo code locked on for a 100% deposit match. That's stathero.com slash locked on using promo code locked on for a 100% deposit match. Terms and conditions apply. All right, continuing along here on the Thursday edition of Locked On Kentucky, Lance Dahl here with you. Top five games of the 2021 22 season uh, with a little bit of thought about what's going on over at Rupp Rafters in between, uh, apparently. The third game on my list we've done five, we've done four, number three is Kentucky taking on number 25 Alabama at home. It was a 90-81 to victory, the Kellen Grady game. Statistically, according to Ken Palm, this was the second most efficient game that Kentucky had all season on offense, uh, and it showed. There were question marks about whether or not Kentucky would be able to actually uh, put together a competent offensive performance, uh, considering the fact that uh, Ty Ty Washington and Severe Wheeler weren't completely healthy. Uh, but they were able to get it, get the uh, get the job done. Very, very impressed with the way that uh, Kentucky shot the ball. Then ended up shooting sixty four percent from three, and this game was nine of fourteen. Kellen Grady twenty five points, nine of sixteen from the floor, seven of nine from three. Just, just really, really impressive the way that the uh, the offense handled itself. And it was it was the game where Cal only uh, he played nine different guys, but only six scored. Only seven took a shot, and the bench was essentially non-existent. It was just like, oh, we're down a couple players. Screw it. I'm going with my starting lineup, and that's who's going to play the entire game. Uh, Kellen Grady had 39 minutes. Mintz had 39 minutes. Shibwe had 36. Toppin had 40. And Keon Brooks Jr. had 37 minutes uh, on top of that. Very, very efficient game. One of those games where Kentucky, again, like I mentioned about the Arkansas game, had to claw back into it. Uh, the resilience on this team was really impressive. And every single time I think about all these different wins where Kentucky was able to just to kind of fight through things. It, I remember doing recap episodes and saying essentially that I thought the Wildcats would do really, really well heading into the postseason because of all these different close wins that they were picking up. Uh, and... Um, the guards, the guards' shot selection and not being able to knock down free throws failed them at the end of the day. Make your free throws. It's very important. <laughs> but yeah, the Alabama game was very, very entertaining. And another entertaining game uh, before Kentucky lost their next two games to them. Don't want to be too down here on, on today's episode, but remember that time Kentucky dropped 107 points on Tennessee, one of the best defenses in America? I remember that. It was fun. It was really, really fun to see the team shoot the way that they did. 68% from the floor, 61% from three, was just burying everything that they threw up. Kentucky's backcourt, the entire backcourt played phenomenally this game. Washington had 28 points, uh, Severe Wheeler had 21, and then Kellen Grady had 16 points off of five of eight shooting. This was a phenomenal game, just just a kind of an out-of-nowhere game. I thought this game was going to be competitive, thought it was going to be close. Didn't think either team would really get past 77, 76 points in this matchup. Both of them did. 
uh, and Kentucky ran away with it. It was one of those just games where it's just so out of the blue. It's just so random. It's like, I did, I did not expect that to happen. Like, I expected Kentucky to win, but I didn't expect it to be like that. And that was one of those games. I think the episode after that game, I think I put out an episode asking, is Kentucky peaking? And I said, oh, bless, uh, bless their heart. Somebody commented uh, on the episode and they were like, you were, you were right, uh, Kentucky, uh, Kentucky, um, you said Kentucky wasn't peaking. And I kind of like teased that at the beginning of the episode. I guess they didn't go and watch because I like straight up asked the question, I'm like, is Kentucky peaking? No, I don't think they are. Like I said straight up, like just exactly like that. And then I explained why I thought that. Turned out it was completely wrong. Uh, but you know what? Sometimes you get some, sometimes you don't. But yeah, that was uh, that was one of those games where it's just like, you look at the trajectory after that and you look at the rest of the schedule and it was just so exciting to see the potential with the team and the fact that the guards were shooting so well and it was a peak. It was a, a defining moment of the season and it was definitely, definitely a peak of some sort. And then the number one game, my favorite game of the 2021-22 season uh, I think this was up there for a lot of people. The uh, demolishing of number five, Kansas, at the Fog, 80-62 to 62 was the final score. The Keon Brooks game, just absolute domination by the Wildcats from the beginning to the very end of the game. And there were moments where Kansas tried to claw back into it, and then Kentucky would promptly extend the lead back to 18-20. to 20. Uh, I'm very impressed with the way that Kentucky was able to hold on to that lead. I remember in after both Vanderbilt games and the Mississippi State game, asking the question, I'm like, why does Kentucky take the foot off uh, foot off the gas? Why do they do that? And several people on Rupp Rafters were saying the same thing. And I was like, I'm really worried that they're going to get in a close match with somebody. They're going to get like a double-digit lead, like a 10 or 11-point lead, and then they're going to kind of ease up a little bit, uh, kind of relax a little bit, and the team's going to be able to take advantage. Uh, in this game, on the road against number 5 Kansas, who's also in the Final Four, uh, that's right. Kentucky blew out two Final Four teams. Uh, it was uh, it was complete domination, and they were able to keep a stronghold on their lead that they had created. The Keon Brooks game. I think this is probably one of the last times they're going to be able to mention it. Um, well, Keon Brooks is coming back next season. I would I would believe he's a junior, right? I'm not I'm not tripping. Am I? I don't think so. But uh, Keon Brooks Jr. Yeah, he is a junior. Okay, Keon Brooks Jr. King of the two-point jumper, and we got to see it on full display in this game. You will never see worse shot selection, but more efficient offense than with Keon Brooks Jr. Very, very solid game uh, from the uh, from the veteran Wildcat. All right, those are my top games of this past season. If you want to give your thoughts on your favorite games, if you want to argue with the Arkansas game, I can see some people getting mad about that one already. It's like, why'd you put a loss in here? Because it was fun, okay? Kentucky was in the game. They came back. I like the resiliency. I like some of the things that happened. They played def- decent defense. It was against a really good team on, on the road in an environment where a lot of calls go the home team's way. Arkansas fans, you can get mad about that all you want. I don't care. But, yeah, if you've, if you've got thoughts on what your top five games were, let me know in the comments below. And, uh, yeah, there you go. Transfer portal news. Three transfers that I want to get to. Very interesting. Very interesting transfer portal news. I want to talk about these three guys in just a second, but before we do that, I want to tell you guys about our friends at Built Bar. Built Bars are actually absolutely delicious, and they're very good for you. They're low in calorie. They are high in protein as well. You can replace your candy bars with these. They are simply better. A typical candy bar can be anywhere from two to 300 calories, whereas most Built Bars are around 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four grams of net carbs, excuse me, four net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Very good for you. They also have a ton of different flavors as well to choose from, mint brownie, coconut almond, and for this month, uh, white chocolate cookies and cream. They're all delicious, and their new flavors coming out all the time. If Built thinks a flavor might be good, they will make it. It will be delicious, and it will also be good for you. You can go to Built.com right now, and you can use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. Again, you can use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. 
All right, wrapping up the Thursday edition of Locked On Kentucky, Lance Daw here with you. Thank you so much for making Locked On Kentucky your first listen every single day. I want to remind everybody that we are free and available on all podcast platforms. And I just remembered something else about Rupp Rafters that I want to go, I want to go ahead and get to. This is going to be brief. Somebody said in the thread on, on Rupp Rafters after somebody had commented my episode and was like, give this guy a shot, listen to what he has to say. Somebody was like, who is he and why should I have to listen to him? Why is his opinion more valid than mine? I think it's specifically what they said. And to be 100% honest with you guys, my opinion is not more valid than yours. My opinion's not more valid than anybody else's on Kentucky basketball. But I will say this, there, there's a reason that I was, uh, I was given the opportunity to host a show like this and it, again, it's not because my opinion is more valid than yours. I've just been put in the position to where I I have the platform. So therefore, the whole goal of the podcast is not to talk down to you and let you know what my opinion is and it's superior. I get things wrong all the time. I just admitted that a little bit ago. But it's to engage with you guys. This is not me talk down to you and I'm going to give the authoritative opinion on it and whatever you say is cool, but it's eventually going to be wrong if it doesn't completely line up with what I have to say. That's not how this works. I'm, I'm here to engage with you guys. That's why I'm frequently, frequently on Rupp Rafters. That's why I ask you to send questions to the podcast. That's why I ask you, hey, if you want to talk about something, hit me in a DM. I like talking about this stuff. It's entertaining. I try and be as, as responsive as I possibly can. Um, you know, there's a reason why I was chosen to uh, to host this show is so that I can get to do stuff like that. And we get to share our opinions. We get to talk about that. It's just simply a platform. And I just happen to be the one behind the mic. So if you want to engage with it, cool. If you don't, that's fine. If you disagree, that's fine. I'd love to hear why. All right. Transfer portal news. Three different guys in the transfer portal that I think Kentucky is either taking a look at or should take a look at. First guy. Fardaw's AMAC. Interesting name. Very, very talented player out of Utah Valley. A 6'11", 245-pound center. We've already talked about him a little bit before on the podcast, but it was put out recently, <coughs> excuse me, that Arkansas, Kentucky, Iowa, Texas Tech, and Washington were the, the schools that he was interested in. AMAC was a very, very talented player. He really, really developed at Utah Valley Averaged 18.9 points per game and 13.6 rebounds per game last season. Again, he would be a huge pickup for the Wildcats. And I can only imagine if Shibwe declares for the NF or NBA draft. Well, if he if Shibwe declares for the NBA draft, I think Kentucky would be in hot pursuit of Fordaz Amac. Uh, we'll keep tabs on him. We will certainly keep tabs on him. Hey, speaking of keeping tabs on kids, uh, I reached out to uh, Justice Hill, uh, Murray State guard. Uh, in the transfer portal, and I asked him what his list was. I asked him who he was leaning towards, and then uh, he informed me uh, two days ago whenever I reached out to him that, oh, by the way, that's my list, but I'll be committing in about half an hour. And then he committed to LSU. So I was going to talk about that on the show. It'd be like, where's he leaning? Because I thought he would be somebody that the Wildcats were interested in, and then he went to LSU to play with his with his coach. Go figure. Uh, but, but really, really hope Justice uh, ends up playing well. Uh, for the Tigers, seems like a nice dude. Adam Miller, the second guy on this list, former LSU, Illinois player. He played at Illinois uh, for his first season in college, I believe, and then he transferred to LSU, had a season-ending injury before the season even started. Uh, didn't end, it did not end up playing a game for the Tigers. Six foot two, 185-pound guard, former four-star, Averaged 8.3 points per game, 2.8 rebounds per game, and about an assist per contest at Illinois. I think this would be somebody worth at least taking a look at because he's, he's a former talented uh, former talented four-star. Could shoot the basketball a little bit, something I think Kentucky needs. I think Adam Miller would be somebody to take a look at. Uh, he, he's, he intrigues me. I think he, he also, I think he played very well within his role at, uh, at, at Illinois after getting to watch him a little bit. And then a final guy here on this list, we briefly mentioned him yesterday, Terrence Shannon Jr., transfer from Texas Tech. Is this the Kellen Grady replacement? I think it might be. Six foot six, 215-pound guard slash forward. I think they would like to run him at the two or the three. I would like to think that 
Kentucky's not going to list him as a forward at all. He's just a tall guard. Averaged 11 points per game, 3.6 rebounds per game, and one and a half assists per game during his three years at Texas Tech. Solid defender, obviously, like the length. He's got a little bit of bounce as well. Shot 38.4% from three last season. Just an overall athlete. Really like what this kid brings to the table. Terrence Shannon, Shannon Jr., also phenomenal defender. Really, really good defender. This is somebody I think Kentucky needs to, to take a look at. And... I would prioritize kids that can shoot really, really well over kids that are just kind of all around uh, guys that you don't know whether or not they're going to be able to play at an elite level. Um, but but this, this this is somebody I, I believe Kentucky would get and I'd have faith in right away. So Terrence Shannon Jr., Adam Miller, and Fardaz Amac, three different guys I think Kentucky should definitely take a look at. There are so many different names out in the transfer portal that the Wildcats are probably also looking at. I will brush brush uh, across those. Uh, is that even the right thing to say? I don't know. We're going to take a look at those guys as this offseason goes on. Kentucky has to pick up another uh, guard in the transfer portal, I believe. Could it be Terrence Shannon Jr.? Then that would be C.J. Frederick Shannon. It would be Cason Wallace and Severe Wheeler. That's a good backcourt. That's a good backcourt, guys. Um, but yeah, let me know what your thoughts are on these three transfers. Uh, anybody else that particularly uh, interests you in the transfer portal? Uh, Leave it in the comments below. That's going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Kentucky. Now make your second listen of the day, Locked On NFL Draft with Ryan Tracy and former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker. They bring the NFL Draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked On UK. You can follow me on Twitter at Lance Dahl underscore, and you can follow the show on Instagram at Kentucky Podcast. I will see you all tomorrow for another episode of Locked on Kentucky. Have a good day, everybody, and God bless.